Hi, I follow along with uh, Paul McWhorter's lessons that he does online. He does series of lessons. Uh, I've enjoyed uh, learning Python from him. Uh, I've enjoyed, uh, he had an AI uh, using a OpenCV a AI series that he did. That was a lot of fun, learned a lot from that. Uh, right now we're working on a Raspberry Pi lessons and uh, I got a lot out of that too. Um, but he usually runs a couple series concurrently and uh, right now he's uh, doing a Fusion 360 slash 3D printing uh, lessons series. Um, I've been using 3D printers for 10 years or nine or 10 years and probably um uh fusion 360 for five or six years so and i actually even teach uh, uh fusion 360 to teens at our local library but uh paul is such a great teacher so i'm following along with his lessons just to get some teaching tips for making it clear for my students because I can, I've learned it very well, but sometimes getting the ideas across to others is a little more challenging for me. So I'm hoping to pick up uh, some teaching tips from Paul along the way. Anyhow, the reason for this video is that um, I was at church last week and uh, somebody brought something up. Let me stop sharing my screen here. So somebody brought up uh, this thing from church. We have a flower uh, container on our altar. The outside is all brass, but uh, this is like a liner for the flowers to go in. You put the arrangement in with, uh, you know, floral foam or whatever it is, and that goes inside this, and they can just set it inside the brass thing on our church altar. So anyhow, they said, well, over the years, we've lost a several of these and uh, they no longer make them where we order them from. They no longer make them. And uh, <laughs> they said, can you make this for us on your 3D printer? I said, well, I can make it probably, but then I'm also going to have to uh, figure out a way to waterproof the inside because 3D prints aren't really waterproof. I've got some ideas with some uh, uh, sealants and epoxy sealants and different stuff that are uh, a couple choices i haven't decided on one yet but uh i uh, figured out uh, it's a nice little project to do in uh fusion 360 and maybe sh show people what it, how you do it so um a couple of things uh if you can notice we got this overhang here on this and it, unless you're going to do support going down to the print bed um, you're not going to be able to print that very well and it really wasn't a critical thing so what i'm doing is i'm making something similar but it's going to be on a 45 degree angle um, that was the only thing that was going to you know not make it a good print without using lots of supports i mean you can't you couldn't really uh print it upside down because then your bottom's not supported. So this has to be the way you're going to do it. And, um, you know, but like I say, this was the only thing. Uh, that's what you got to think about when you're 3D printing. Oh, how do I do this so it doesn't, you know, end up being a problem? So um, that was one thing. So another thing was I said, well, what's really critical on this? Because you're not going to measure all the all this exact and everything. So I uh, went up to the altar after this church service and put it in there. And I noticed that it was fairly good fit around the length and the, the width of the, uh, um, the it, had to, it wasn't sloppy in there at all. So this is a pretty critical uh, dimension under this lip here. So uh, that was pretty critical. Another thing is the overall height of it. That had to be critical because you can't, you don't want it bottoming out down there and uh, uh, doing that. So that was critical. 
and you see these indentations on the sides here. Um, that's a feature that has to be on there because there's like a little something screwed to the outside of the uh, uh, the brass thing, and it's held on with screws. And when this sits down inside, you gotta there's some button head screws that you have to two button head screws that you have to uh, you know allow for in that area. And uh, since uh, the flourish doesn't necessarily know which way it is, they put it on both sides here so that, you know, we'll have to make it both sides. That way it doesn't matter. The flower arrangement's not gonna be backwards because of the uh, way it has to fit in the thing. Um, so that was the, the two main dimensions or, you know, set of dimensions that you really need to do. Of course, the bottom, you know, you got to be close on the rest of these and this, where this is and everything. And, uh, um, you know, within a tenth of an inch or something, you know, probably closer to uh, a twentieth of an inch or something is what you want to be looking for. But, uh, you know, some of your radiuses and everything, as long as it works out, you're fine. So one of the things that I hope Paul actually gets to is, uh, you know, what do you do? You don't go, somebody hands you this, you don't go straight to Fusion 360 and start, uh, um, you know, designing in CAD. And uh, that's just not the proper way to do it. Not the way I would do it for sure. So um, what I do is grab my trusty calipers got a nice uh, Starrett brand calipers. Of course, dial calipers, everybody's using digital now. These are probably 20 years old. Um, I also took an apprentice, uh, machinist apprenticeship back when, my, when I was in my 30s. Never really got into the trade much, but I use it on the farm here. I have a mill and a Bridgeport lathe on the farm that I use for uh, making stuff when I need it. But uh, um, got a pretty complete machine shop, but uh, you can see how to measure your things and everything. But if you notice, this thing's almost uh, seven inches long, so um, I had to uh, bring out my big daddies. I got these are just from China, but it's a twelve-inch uh, caliper, but they're veneer calipers so if anybody's ever played with veneer calipers i'm not going sure the veneer is going to show up but you got to match up your lines as you get it there to and uh use your lines on the veneer to um uh, figure out what you what what size you need it so that worked out well for me and uh i was able to get all the dimensions i needed but like I said, you don't start right out in the software. What you do is uh, I'm going to switch cameras here to a different one. Um, let's see. Camera, camera, camera. Here we go. So this is my overhead camera. So I am certainly not an artist, but uh, uh, rough sketches are definitely what you want to do with this stuff. And um, so you, I, I usually draw it like in uh, two different ways here. You draw it face on and then you draw it end on and that way you can get your measurements. So as I said, you know, the measurements under this lip here is pretty critical. And with my veneer calipers, I measured that, you know, seven, seven inch, 750 was pretty, was close. And uh, the same way, the width of it here was nine in, three inch, nine fifty. So um, that was uh, something good. Um, like I said, and at the bottom you got two forty and six twenty. And then these cutouts here, I just got the flat part, and then I'll put uh, some uh, fillets on it after I make it. But uh, you got measured this like I said it's not critical as long as it clears the uh, screw heads that are in there but uh, it's about 250 high by one inch 800 uh, wide and like I say that's centered so that's the way to do it and if you notice there was like a, 
inside of it, there was a, uh, a grid at the bottom just to hold it up off of the foam up off the bottom. And I guess if you put a little bit of water in it so that it doesn't uh, um, uh, bother it too much. Um, they were, that was not a critical dimension, but you know, you need something in there. So I uh, just did that and got some rough dimensions that I knew would work. And uh, the ones that are in there probably are only a hundred thousandths wide, but there wasn't any reason that you couldn't make them wider. So I decided to make them two hundred thousandths, you know, across on everything. So anyhow, and here is where I was, instead of having the flat like they do here, I just took the top of this and made a 45 degree flare uh, on it. And I decided to make that uh, 300 thousandths high. Uh, you'll notice uh, my dial caliper and uh, veneer calipers. I think the veneers might be metric as well, have a metric scale, but my dial calipers are imperial Yankee units, as they call them. And uh, I've worked with that ever since. And uh, like I said, it doesn't matter to uh, Fusion 360 what units you work in, and you can convert between them easy enough. Um, of course, your your slicer wants millimeters, so you have to make sure you export the STL in millimeters when you go to print it. But uh, yep, so I just decided to put this lip on there. So um, actually, um, so my, what I really wanted to do today is to go through this and uh, let's share the screen here. Let's try this. Okay, so I'm back to my Fusion 360. Well, let's change the camera. Well, I'll to turn the camera off, but I'll turn it on me, and I'm going to move me down here in a corner, I guess. Um, like I said, you can see I already built it. It took probably, measuring it up like I did, probably took 15 minutes and then probably another 20 minutes to draw this up and everything. So. Um, but we'll go to what I want to do is show you the process. I could go through your timeline. Paul hasn't mentioned the timeline down here, but each of your steps that you do are actually recorded on a timeline. And uh, I could go back through that, but I think it'll be just as quick just to use my uh, sketch and redraw everything. I think I can remember the steps I took. Like I said, it, you can do it a couple of different ways. And I started. So uh, let's just start out with a new one. And uh, I started with the bottom. So we're going to start with a sketch and uh, we're uh, going to start with a, the bottom of the unit. And we'll just uh, do a you know, let's create a sketch. We want it on the Z, Z pointing up. So X, Y plane, I guess Paul calls it. And uh, to keep things centered, I like to do stuff if I can with a, uh, rectangles as a center point rectangle where you just put in the point that you want and then you draw it out. And then, uh, like I said, Paul saying you can put 6.200 tab over and the other one was 2.400. All right, and then enter. So there's our bottom of our, of our, uh, flower liner, flower liner. So we got it there. So uh, one of the next things, Paul hasn't got to this yet, but uh, one of the uh, nice things about Fusion 360 is you can uh, draw on different planes. So we're going to go with a, get a plane and it's called a offset plane and it allows you to offset it. So we're going to it's asking you, so what plane do we want to offset from, which is this one, and what distance to it. So, so we want this to be the top of our uh, flower pot. So that dimension was actually 3.1253 and an eighth inches. So that's where that is. So 
So now we got another plane that we can draw on. Uh, like I said, you can draw on your origin planes, your X, Y, X, Z, and stuff like that but when you start out, but you can also uh, pick other planes to start on. So, um, well, Do that. So uh, we're going to do another sketch. Create a sketch. It's going to ask me what plane, you know, back there we did all these. Now we got a new one that we can do, and we can select that plane. And it looks like we're drawing right over top of this one. But uh, after we draw the rectangle, I'll show you that it's not there. So we want to create another rectangle, uh, but we don't want the normal. If you clicked on this, you get a you know a corner rectangle where you'd have to two point rectangle they call it. But we want to do another center so we keep them centered, and we're going to do that. And uh, this is the one that's seven inch seven fifty by three inch nine fifty. All right. Move it over three inch nine fifty by seven inch seven fifty, and you can see that they're both on the same center there, so that you can do it. Um, but we can finish this sketch here, and uh, now you can see that you got two rectangles, two, uh, and they're in space together and uh, along this line, but they're uh, ones that you can do. So. Uh, now we go into what a kind of a cool thing on uh, this is that you can do what they call a loft. So we'll go down here and we'll find a loft and it tells you a tip of what it is, it creates a transition between two or more sketches. So that's what it's doing. You could actually go from a circle to a square like they're showing, but uh, we're going from two rectangles and it'll give us an even transition in between them. So we're gonna choose that. And it's asking me, what is our first profile? So we'll click here and then uh, we'll go and then we want a second profile. So I don't know, let's say, do I have to do anything to do different here? There we go. So you click on the second profile and it automatically creates it. And we say, okay, now you got, uh, nice solid object with your that looks like our uh, uh, flower pot so far. So, um, so far, so good. Um, so, on the flower pot, you got these rounded things here, and they're called fillets in Fusion 360 or any kind of manufacturing uh if it's a 45 degree or a flat thing it's called a chamfer and if it's a rounded it's called a fillet so it's spelled like fillet but they're in this type of application called a fillet and that's available to us up here you could it's and it's under the modify thing so um I don't know, I can't remember which I did first. So uh, we'll go ahead and uh, do that. So we can choose this and it's going to give us, and you can pick more than one line. So we can actually do all four lines. And we can even do this one back here that we can't see because it automatically, Fusion automatically picks it up that, hey, there's a line back here. Maybe you want that one. So if you hover over it, it's going to pick that line. You got to be careful when you do that because sometimes you get, you could get this line down here too, but we know it's this is the line we want. So we're gonna pick it. And it tells us we have four edges and it wants to know uh, what the radius of our fillet's gonna be. And um, I decided that, uh, that a 750 radius would be good. So I'm gonna put 0.750 in there and it automatically updates it, but it, until you hit okay, it doesn't accept it. So we're gonna say, okay. All right, so we got that done. Uh, we won't do the other radiuses we have right now because uh, like I said, we got more than more radiuses coming. The bottom has a radius and then the also around this uh, notch out here on both sides has to be a radius. 
So we'll do that next. We'll go into getting that. So um, now we want to draw another uh, rectangle for that. So um, we're going to say, well, where do you want to draw? We don't have anything, uh, our origin still there, but, uh, and you can, um, you know, it, it brings it up when you do it. But we actually want to draw on one of these tapered sides. So this is going to be where we're going to draw it. And uh, so this face is face on now. So this is like you're taking a marker and drawing on the side of our flower pot. So um, we want a rectangle there. And this time we can go with a regular rectangle. And uh, I actually do things a little different than Paul do does. I pick a good spot on our thing. It kind of, you get to hover over it and you see the X come in. That means that it's going to constrain it to that line, which is, you know, right now that's what I want. So, and then you can go up with it. And so we can go ahead and mark it out. I said that it wanted to be 1.800 wide. And then we want a tab and it's going to be 2.2. 2.500 uh, high. All right. And we can go ahead and hit enter there. All right. So um, you can see that we Paul's been talking about constraints. You can see that it constrained it to being on this line here. So the top and bottom, because of this measurement, that's good. But we can still slide it side to side if we wanted to, um, because it's not uh, constrained that way. So um, so I want to go ahead and dimension it. And uh, Paul said you can use this up here, but you can also use the shortcut key D. And you'll see that the cursor, that dimension thing got there. So we can still, even though it's not on our plane, we can still uh, get our origin to use for um, uh, dimensioning. So I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to click on this and we're going to bring it down and we know that we want it to be um, one in the center so we want it to be half of our 1.8 so you could uh just say well 1.8 that'd be 0.9 but the cool thing about uh fusion is that you can actually do math down here so uh we'll click on it and we can say 1.8 and then we can say divided by two and uh, that'll automatically calculate that force so we don't have to do that so and that puts it right in the center and did the calculation for us of course that one that one was easy but sometimes you know if you got uh 750 and you want to divide by two you might not know that it's half of that's 375 without getting out a calculator or something but uh, uh that's that's the way it is now, like I said, uh, we were actually, that's what we wanted to um, create a, a depression on our thing for that, uh, a recess in our pot for that. But uh, if we went ahead and stopped, our, finished our sketch here and did uh, extrude in, we would actually end up with like a little triangle down here at the bottom because we're on this angle. And it, it's going to go in straight on that angle, and it would leave a little triangle in there. So uh, we really just need to uh, make this a little bit different so that we can uh, uh, have it so that we make sure we get it all. And this is a non-critical thing. We know we want it to be the same width and everything. And if you hover over it, it brings it over there. And then if you kind of bring it down, unless you go too far out, it's going to snap to that. So uh, we can just do that and uh, uh, escape out. And then we might, oh, it actually uh, looks like it, okay, but that's okay. But it actually uh, looks like it put it down to the other dimension. But okay, so we got it there. And I'm just going to D for dimension. I'm going to say that I want this to be a couple hundred thousands. Uh, whoops, wrong one. So it went. Oh my. 
you should be able to click both of these and get a dimension. Okay, we won't do it that way. We'll do it this way. Oh, I'm having all kinds of trouble here. And okay, and this is where if you over constrain stuff, so it tells me. But anyhow, we actually do, this is one of the cases we don't care what this is. We just want to make sure it cuts there. We can leave this blue, and I'm going to show you that you actually can leave it blue. I'm not sure why I couldn't dimension it really quick there. It's, I'd have to, I know what I could do. I just go in here and put a dimension here. There we go. A lot of times if you zoom in, you're not picking the right line. So it, we're just going to say a 200,000 line there. Okay, so sometimes if you zoom in, you'll be able to get a better uh, idea of what you want to do. And when you have like, we have this uh, dimension uh, tool still on there to get out of it, of any of those, you just hit escape and you can get out of it. Okay, so now we can uh, finish our sketch. All right, and I always like to go to home just to, sometimes I'll go to home and sometimes I won't. Oh, we turned it around, so we're actually on there. But you can see that we have this and um, it looks like that we didn't fully dimension it, so it, but I think it'll work just fine without it. So, but we now we want to extrude this in, which is actually called a cut. But um, again, if you you could go up to a sh extrude, press pull or extrude. Here's extrude, um, but you can use the E hotkey to do that. And it's asking you select what do you want to extrude. Well, I want this one plus I want this little one down here to make sure that we don't get that little triangle I was talking about. And um, because we want to go in. We want to go in the negative direction. And I think that that was 150 thousandths in that we wanted to go on that. Let me look real quick. Yeah, I think 150. Like I said, I already did this, so I'm not, I probably did. Well, let's use our calipers and we can measure it. So. Another thing that you can do with your calipers is do a depth measurement. And uh, let me see if I can get this in the picture here. So, oh my, there we go. So that's our, th our thing. And we wanna put our, the point of our, what I'm doing is the point of our caliper comes out. And that's also a depth gauge that you can use. So let's do that. I didn't do that earlier. And we, if you read it, we're at about 180 thousandths. So I don't think that's, yeah. Let me do it again, just to make sure. Uh, it come out to 200 that time. So it wasn't 175, it was 200. So we want to extrude that to, two, to 200, but we want to actually extrude in. So we want to go negative 0.2. And if you notice up here, instead of a uh, uh, new body or modifying the old body, it's asking, it's telling you the operation is going to be a cut, which means it's going to cut into it. And we're going to say, okay. And now you can see that we have a cut in there. Now you could go to all the trouble of redoing the other, and you can see we don't have a triangle down there. It automatically took care of that. Now, like I said, you could you can see that you could do the same thing to the other side, but we also Paul mentioned that mirror thing. So we can also mirror and we can mirror that whole operation of that extrude. And uh, so we can go to uh, create mirror. Okay, and it's asking us, what do we want to mirror? And if you just click this, this is on our timeline, you can pick that whole extrude and you can say, that's what I want to uh, uh, mirror. And then you click down, you want to say, what do you want to mirror it on? And um, you have to look inside that, and pick your face. And sometimes, see, we can't really see that face now, but if you hold down your left mouse button, it's asking you, what are you, what are you trying to point at there? And we have, you know, it's, it's actually seeing two faces, plus it's on top of the XZ 
plane. So that's what we want to choose. So we're going to choose that. And so it's mirroring over the plane that goes through here. And it just took care of it and put it in there. And you hit OK. And it adds it a mirror to our timeline down there. And that's don't have to do all that twice. So now we can uh, go ahead and uh, uh, put our other fillets on there. And this is where it gets kind of strange because you got to pick a bunch of them. So we want to pick. So it's picking because it's on that radius, it's picking all of those. We also want because we're going to make them all the we're going to make this the same radius too. And this time we do have to go around and we're going to get this and this. And you want to get make sure you get the front ones because sometimes you can get the back ones there. So I'm just looking at it. I think I got all the ones that I want to do. This is actually called, you know, tan. You want to chain them together. So, and the sides we did 750 degree radius, 750, 0.75 inch radius. This one we're going to do a half that. We're going to do a three three eighths radius. So we already have our dimension there. So we can put 0.375. And that's going to do a radius on those. Okay. okay. So that looks awful lot like what we got there, except it's a solid. I don't think Paul's gone into this yet. So the one cool thing that we can do with uh, uh, fusion. Oh, we do have one more thing I have to do. I forgot about that. So um, let's do that first. But uh, we want to remember we wanted our 45 degree angle lip on that thing. So what we want to do is we actually want to uh, uh, extrude on something. So we're going to say we want to extrude and we want to extrude this up. But without drawing any extra sketches, we can actually do this so that it's 45 degree angle. So we we have it here and we want to we said we wanted to go up 0.300 thousandths. So right now it went straight up, but uh, you also have this thing here here called a taper angle. So I don't know whether yeah, 45. You could go plus or minus 45. So if you want to go the other way, you would go negative 45. So this is the way we wanted to go. So without drawing any other sketches, we extrude it and we're extruding it at an angle. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, and so this other thing here is when you're extruding is join new body or cut. So we you can actually click here and you got other ones intersect new component and all that, but we want to join for sure. So we'll do that. And now we're done with that. So now we have our 45 degree that's going to be able to 3D print and it's going to be a good thing. Um, one thing I the thickness here I measured as being about uh, it's right at 150 thousandths. So um, that's uh, what we need the thickness of the body to. So we can go to all the work of doing all that work to get inside of there. But we actually have a really cool tool on Fusion where you create this solid and you go up here and it's called a shell. So we'll click on that and it's asking, what face do you want to shell out? So this is the face that we want to start with. And it wants to know what is the inside thickness. So we want. 150,000. And we say OK. And what it did is it created uh, the whole inside for us. Um, it mirrored whatever was on the inside and did outside. Uh, I mean, did whatever was on the outside did inside. And the one click or a couple clicks in a measurement and dimension, and you shelled out the whole body so that's kind of cool and then so the only thing left that we haven't done is we didn't put those uh, ribs in the bottom to keep the uh, flower foam off the uh, base so 
I um, just did some rectangles on that. So we're going to say that we want to create a sketch. And where do we want to create it? We want to create on the inside of this. So that's what we're clicking on. And that's where we're starting. We'll move over a little bit. And we can come out. So I just did, uh, I guess I could do, I actually should do a center point rectangle for the first one. So we're going to do a center point rectangle and click on the center. And we're just going to, because the radiuses, uh, you could do up the radiuses if you wanted to, but it's automatically going to click to this. So we're going to leave it at that. And it's that dimension is already set. So we're going to tab over and we just want this to be 0.200. So we're locking that. And it's set. Uh, so we, that's one of them. And then we want two more rectangles. And we're going to start up here on this line here and just, and, and when you get the X, you know that it's going all the way down to that thing. So you can type in 200 here, and but we don't need the other one. So we'll hit X and I know you've got blue because it can be moved side to side, but we'll get to that in a second. We're going to do another one. And we're going to say 0.2. And we're going to say enter. And again, they're blue. All right, so now we have to make dimensions to put those in certain places. We know they're 200 thousandths wide, but we need to know I'm going to do it off the center line again because that's a good place to do it. So we're going to go D for dimension. And we're going to say the center line to this line. And we're going to make that to be 1.200. And you see, we still got a blue down there, yeah, but that's OK. We got the blue here, too. I don't necessarily worry about being 100% uh, constrained as long as it's doing what I want it to do. But so we'll need to do another dimension here. So we come back up here to here to here. And we want it to be point, oh, that's page 1.2. Go. So now we got that done, we can finish our sketch. And uh, we can go back to our home a little bit, and then we'll have to actually tilt it a little bit yeah, there, there. So we want to see what we're going to extrude because we want to extrude these up. So we're going to do E for extrude or click that button. And then you got to pick because we have these crossing triangles, you got to pick them all. So we're going to pick one, two, three. And if you accidentally pick this, you can click on it again, and it'll unselect it. So that's kind of cool. If you mess, don't get your mouse in the right place. So that's the parts we want to extrude. Screwed, and it's asking me how far up I want them, and I'm thinking 0.200 on up to. And once you do that, you can hit OK. And I don't know how long we've been doing this, but there is our flower thing. And just in case you haven't know, well, I haven't shown you, but I got uh, three of them printed so far. I think I'll probably do one more for them right now. It takes about 12 hours to print that on my Prusa um, with a 20% infill. Uh, but you can see everything turned out just fine. So. Anyhow, I just thought that'd be a kind of a cool project to share with you. Uh, uh, like I said, it's more advanced than what Paul's showing you, but. Uh, I, if you keep watching Paul, I bet you'll learn, you'll, he'll teach you a more, uh, better way, not better way, but a better teaching than I tried to show on here. And, uh, hope you get, you know, like I said, I hope you can get to it. And like I said, what we do that in 20 minutes, maybe, I don't know. We'll see when I stop the video. Have a good day.